Hey guys, it's Kaz here and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and a bit of an art look with the November, that is wrong, with the December scroller box. So, talking about November, I did do one in November, so I'll link that above and below. Check it out if you want to see some more arty times. This is a December box, I don't know what's in it yet, we're going to do an unboxing and then some sort of artwork. So, Enough of me stood here, let's go to the old flat view and open the box and see what's in there and do some stuff. So we are now on the flat lay. Side note, this is a table that I decorated many, many moons ago. So uh, you'll just have to deal with that. Hopefully it doesn't focus on people's faces. Anyway, before I open that, I just want to mention one more box that I got that I didn't do a video on, but on Black Friday, they had loads of that old boxes for cheap. So I bought one for £9, it had this in it. Basically I've been wanting one of these for quite a while, I think they're really cool. It is a watercolour sheet, very very portable. And as you can see, the colours are just in here. That's normally like 26 quid, and the box was £9, so pretty decent. Had a pencil in it. I don't normally care about the pencil, but I've actually been using this one quite a lot. It is a mechanical pencil, but you only have to press it once and then it just does it automatically on its own, so that's always cool. It's also got a rubber on the end. And apparently the RRP on that is like £11, which I would definitely not spend £11 on a pencil. But there you go, I've got it now and I very much enjoy it. And then it also came with a paintbrush and a fine liner as well for £9 good times so onto the December box we did get an email saying that the sweet treat isn't in here because delivery was too late but to be fair out of everything that could have been missing I don't care that it's the random sweet that you get with it rather than an art supply so let's open this up and see what we got Oh, very pretty, very different from last month. If you haven't seen the one from last month, this is the colour of the zine. And this is very much the opposite. So, we'll get into that in a minute because it's got all the spoilers in. Here's the print. It's a random face. There's all the info from the artist. I'll read that off camera, but there you go. Some stuff you might want to know. We have watercolour paper from Derwent 12 sheets 300 GSM in a nice little block I'm guessing that we've got watercolour again then I really I'm not mad about that because watercolour is pretty expensive oh okay that is a not what I was expecting. So we have these. What are they called? Art crayon. So mixed media, not really watercolour, but maybe they do... Well, I'm guessing with that they do react with water. So we've got a yellow, a purple I think, potentially blue, but I think it's purple. And some sort of pink there. I've never seen these before, so that is interesting. Something that I've... Definitely never used before. We've got the sticker of course. There's always a sticker in here. Just a normal pencil. I mentioned this in my last video. I really don't care about the pencils unless it's something fancy and different. I'm not going to count it. So when I do my whole is the box worth it price wise. I will not be counting however many pounds they pretend this is. Because it's just a pencil. 6B. You can get them anywhere. And then a brush. So obviously it definitely does react with water. Ooh, one last thing in here. Ah, we've got a Derwent kneadable eraser. These are always fun. You can squish them about and get into places. So it looks like this. It's just... So it looks like this. You can smush it about and you can get into little places. I'm guessing this one is a little bit more expensive than the ones I've normally got. I normally get them for about a quid and they're definitely never this soft. So this camera is definitely not liking the busy background. So the challenge is expressive expressions. This is just all of the different items on here. 
they do have the prices on here they are happy but i like to google it and see the cheapest i can get each of these items for and see if the box is worth it so before i do that let's just have a look through the zine just real quick i'll read it off camera so here are all the art supplies got a little bit about the artist here are some interesting faces got some tips and tricks and then a gallery from the October box and then some more words so I will read that I will come up with an idea and then I'll be back and I will do said idea so for now here is a message from one of our sponsors and I shall be back with an artwork with all of the info on how much you can get each of these for and also probably some more chat in absolute waffle hey 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 tim do you uh do you think everyone should like and subscribe okay so first thing i do obviously swatch everything out while i'm doing that i'm just gonna go through the price points because i said i would so the brush i couldn't really find so i just took it as a pound because on the rrp little sheet it said one pound 29 or something the kneadable eraser about two pound fifty the watercolour pad about seven pound so that together first off is about ten pound fifty and then these weird art crayons were really hard to find i think they might be more easy to find in america perhaps because on the little menu thing that you get with the box it says that the rrp of them is 6.99 each but i literally couldn't find them anywhere online for 6.99 each on amazon individually they were like about 15 quid each about 10 pound with five pound pmp or you could get a pack of four very similar colors for about 20 quid so whether we take the 6.99 each whether we take the 20 pound for four or whether we take the 15 pound for one the box is definitely worth it because everything else in it is £10.50. If you can hear loads of weird moving about, it's because I've got a cat on my knee and he's just being really annoying. Would you stop? Uh, so yes, back to the actual video at hand. I was watching it out, seeing how you get these different techniques, trying, trying different things. Also, the paper was really nice, so I decided to just do the full image on this bit of paper rather than wasting a sheet just to do the swatches on. Normally, do the swatches on a separate sheet and then on that sheet do a few practice images. But because the challenge was expressive expressions, I felt like if I did sort of thumbnails or tried to decide what I was going to do before I did it, it wouldn't be very expressive. It would be more structured so i wanted to just jump straight in so for me normally i do quite realistic portraits i'm not into expressive things and drawings etc so i decided to go with an eye and then sort of chuck loads of color around, around it and hope that it makes sense as expressionism talking about expressionism just in general it's a very hit or miss sort of art for me a lot of it I don't really like if it looks like paint's just been thrown on a page and there's no idea behind it. Even if there is, hey, I'm sure all the artists that put two colours down on a piece of paper and sell it for millions, I'm sure there's a story behind it. But I have to feel emotion when I'm looking at a piece of art. So if it's just a piece of colour on a, on a brick, I don't care. But if it's loads of colours and it looks good and it gives me emotion like Kandinsky for example I'm a fan of Kandinsky's work and he was very expressive and it looked random but also looked thought out at the same time whereas other artists in the expressionism movement I'm not massively keen on like the scream the screams expressionism don't really like it don't really care for it I went to see it when I was in Oslo I saw it, I took a picture of it, and then I was like, alright then, now I'm going to go and look at the pictures that I actually like, because, meh, it's just there, in it? There's, like, millions of people around it taking selfies with it, and I just took a quick photo and then left. Although there is another um, Edward Monk picture that was in the same room, and it was way better, and I don't know why it's not more famous than The Scream, because it's way better. I don't know what it's called. It's this woman and then she looks really harrowing and there's so much emotion in her face and it's really big as well, the, the painting 
is really big compared to the scream so it just feels like it's more impressive and i was looking at that and i actually got chills all right there's another cat for you and yeah basically i liked that more than the scream i don't understand why people like scream let's stop talking about the scream <laughs> The picture, here I am, I'm still drawing the eye on the picture. I've now got two cats on me. <laughs> Guys, you're not making this very easy. Uh, yes, I mentioned that I like doing realism more than sort of expressionism. I'll throw a couple of pictures up on screen of some portraits I've done. There you go, it's on screen now probably if I've put it in. So yeah it's kind of hard for me to just throw caution to the wind and just do something like this so i really enjoyed this sort of art medium and doing it just in general just giving it a go so i've not really talked about these art crayons so basically they're really really soft oil pastels when you put it down it feels like drawing with lipstick it's really really soft and they're really blendable, you can blend it out with water, you can blend it out with your finger. That was some of the tips and tricks, so I thought I'd try both. Get some little little finger work in there and also... <laughs> I'm sorry guys, there's a cat on me. I might even just insert a clip of what you're looking at right now as I'm talking. But yeah, these are really fun to use. I don't know what I would do in the future. I like mixed media work when it's just random stuff but i've never tried mixed media and portrait work at the same time so that was a bit that was a little bit a little bit of a challenge for me personally i do like where i went with it though i think it's kind of kind of cool it's kind of obvious as well you know expressions eyes but hey it works for me I don't know if you can hear this purr, but if you can, then just listen to that instead of me chatting absolute waffle. That's way better. So at this point, I really didn't know what I was going to do. And then I decided, hey, I'll just make, make the face more of a face rather than just an eye. So I decided to sort of sketch out the nose area as well and make that out of the colours and try and be as expressive as I can because I don't know how to be expressive with colour. So that's what I'm doing here. Throwing down a sort of nose shape, hoping it looks alright. And I think it I think it did. I think it worked well. I kind of like how I did it and did the colour blocks and it made the, the shape of the face sort of thing. I've now got one cat on top of the other cat and I'm really sorry that you can't see this. You're watching the art and the best thing is right here in front of me. Soz. In fact, let me see if I can just quickly get a little bit of this film on film. This is what is happening right now. He's on my knee and he was in my arms but now he's sort of just on top of him. <laughs> Back to the colour in. So at this point I decided I wanted to fill the whole page because it didn't really make sense just to have a bit in the middle. It wasn't fun enough. So this is where I just went in with the colours, went crazy, hoped that it looked all right. One thing that I wish I did do is follow the contour of the face more on all this random stuff that I threw around it. Because on the nose I did, I tried to make sort of the yellow bit the highlight of where the little nub of the nose would be. And I tried to do the bit around the eyes to follow the sort of shape of the cheek. But on this bit, I kind of just started throwing down loads of colour, so it didn't work as well. But I thought if I didn't do that, it would just all be yellow. Um, I tried this other technique. I tried just scribbling the colour on a yoghurt pot and then using it as paint, which was kind of cool. It meant I could get flat colours down without the, the scribble effect in the background. So that worked well. I think I just decided to do that. I don't know if it was in the tips or tricks to scribble it down and use it as paint. I just thought it would work. And it did. 
so this is what i mean sort of this this red bit around here and the purple bit at the bottom don't really make sense to the contour of the face but you know you live and you learn it would make more sense if it was more angular to where the cheekbone would be but it still it still works it does a job it does what it's trying to do have you two quite finished there goes one so yeah just throw more color on at the end trying to to tie it all together and yeah just in general i really liked doing this i think the piece finished and worked out really well and i hope you do too let me know down below if you think it looks all right if you think it looks terrible and if this is your first video by me and you enjoy it then please check out some of my others and if you continue to enjoy then please subscribe that'd be awesome anyway guys i'll see you in a few days with another video bye